Maybe I can do our neck here. Um, I have Ivy Rose back with us today to talk about uh, the, the part of historical fiction that will probably keep me from ever being a historical fiction author. The research. It's an intimidating su subject to be certain, but she tackled it very well with her own novel, Old River Road, which is about her great, great, five generations back grandparents. And so let's see and hear and find out what she has to say. Over to you. Hi guys, it's Ivy from Lakeside Publications and I am so excited to be taking part in the Indie Econ this year. And thank you to Kendra for all of her hard work. Today we're going to be talking about how to research a historical novel. Now, research, as almost any writer knows, can be difficult, overwhelming, and incredibly stressful. And yes, while those things are all accurate, there are some things that can be done to help minimize the stress, maximize productivity, and get the information you need without overloading yourself. A few years ago, I wrote this book, The Old River Road, which is the true story of my great-great-great-grandparents. And I always forget how many greats it is. This story took me on an adventure, to say the least. I already knew quite a bit about um, my ancestors, but having to look for concrete facts and dates and times was really very difficult and not something that I had thoroughly planned out. One of the elements that I have yet to completely make solid is the date of birth for my main character, who is my great-great-great-grandmother, Clara MacDonald. Her birth date is between one of three years, and I don't know which year it is, nor have I been able to figure it out. So the conclusion that I have come to is that she lied on her marriage certificate so that she could get married um, younger, and no one quite knows exactly when her birthday is, including her children. So that was quite an interesting thing to discover, and it still is quite hysterical to realize that somewhere along the line there was a lie about how old she was, and n it never got um, fixed. The very first thing to remember when researching for his a histor- <laughs> I can't talk. The very first thing to remember when researching a historical novel is that you are not going to be able to fit all of the amazing information you find into your book. This was very difficult for me because of the true story that I was writing. I was not able to fit everything in the book and that still is very difficult for me. However, it is important to know what you're going to be writing about and what elements of the history you're researching is going to be applicable because it's very easy to get caught up in the little rabbit trails of something that was interesting and follow it way too far. So tip number one, know what information you need, find it and move on. Tip number two, get a binder. Now the binder is important because you are going to want to print out things and put them somewhere. Not everything can be digitalized digitalized. Not everything can be digitized in this process. So you're going to need some place to put all of the information. This is the binder, whoa, this is the binder that I used while writing uh, The Old River Road and it is the one that I'm still using writing the second book in that series. As you can see it's there's stuff falling out of it and these are all things that I need to put in their proper places in here. Have not done it yet. Um, but this is just where all of my random findings go and sometimes people will find something for me and I don't know if it's going to be important. They don't know if it's going to be important but it's good to have and to look at and decide if I'm going to need to use the information. My experience with researching historical novels has been very specific thus far because I was using real people, real places, um, real dates and times and all of that crazy stuff. So in my binder I... Let's see if I can do this without dropping. In my binder I put the names of all my characters slash real people and in each character's file I would put the little things that I found that were applicable to my story. And those character files have been unbelievably helpful throughout writing a series. Tip number three, which kind of carries out from tip number two, make sure 
if you're working with real people in any historical situation whatsoever, if you're writing fiction but there are real people making an appearance in your fictional novel, it's important to have little details about them because your book can come across as under-researched, um, poorly researched, or things can just get messed up really easily. So if you're using real people, I highly recommend making character sheets. Now, I would hold one of these up for you, but these are these have a lot of my handwriting um, and things that were very applicable to me, so they're not, probably won't help you very much. However, things that are important to include are the actual name of the person, the year they were born, anything that they were included in, it's important to have that listed. Um, place of marriage, place of birth, marriage year, um, spouse's name, how many children, all of the little details that you don't normally need for a fictional character. Um, because if you get a year wrong or a time wrong that that person never actually went to, that can be pretty embarrassing. So it's important to have very specific facts listed on your character sheets. Now I know a lot of plotters will do this just to do it for their fiction novels, which is amazing. I am not a plotter. I am a panster. And so doing this much pre-planning is very difficult for me. However, I didn't do it for the first couple of chapters in my um, book and I was kicking myself for it later because there was a lot that I had to go back and fix. So I highly recommend having a binder with all of the things that are included in it. I hope this video was helpful to some of you in researching historical novels and the types of things you should be looking for and the types of things that you can let go and slip by. Again, I'm Ivy from Lakeside Publications. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye!